Hey, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. How is everyone this morning? Just get myself a little bit ready so that we can get going. Allow a few people to come on. That's, I was just updating my prayer list. If anybody has any prayers that they would uh, like uh, prayed for this morning, then please do let me know. I just get my app up. Oh, and it's somebody's um, festival this morning. It's John of the Cross. And I'm going to uh, check out who it is so that we have um, a little information about him. John of the Cross, there he is. And we can uh, have a look at him later when the time comes. So, how is everybody? We've got Christine on. Morning, Christine. Pat, Mary. Hi, Kate. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Morning Prayer. It's beginning of the week. Here we go again. Oh, Christmas is scarily close now, isn't it? I don't know about you, but it's that moment in time when you think, huh. Ah, Oh, I'm certainly doing that. Anyway, with all the things that have been going on the last couple of weeks, it's been a little bit last minute, shall we say. So, here's a mess. Morning, Janet. Morning, Rose. How are you? So, it's just, well, it's more than just gone. It's two minutes past nine. So, we're going to begin. I'm going to light our candle. It is the beginning of the week. How is that, how is this week going to shape up for you? Are you going to do some panic buying, probably like myself? Are you, um, have you, I wondered whether um, perhaps um, the sermon on Sunday from myself or from Alison has provoked you to, um, or from the uh Stanton Family Service has provoked you to perhaps think about something that uh, you want to press in this week. Um, the uh, message on the pew sheet was very much tied into my uh, sermon on Sunday. So there's a sort of snippet of it. So you can have a look if you weren't with me at South Marsden or if you didn't uh, join the online service. Morning, Jamie. Um, and it's about using how our experiences of um, the pandemic and how we feel at this time where there's a vaccine and the wait for the vaccine to be rolled out to the whole of um, certainly this country as well as others and what it, that waiting now and not yet time. One, no Ronaldo this morning, he's sulking with me oh dear christine <laughs> what did you do to him i shut my dog out when i went for a shower the other morning and then he didn't speak to me all day <laughs> they can be quite fickle can our pets especially cats i see i uh, i find anyway let's begin morning everyone uh Yes, a very, oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Mary. Yes, it's, yes, it's, so it's about using that experience of pressing in and that longing for the vaccine so that we can uh, be with our loved ones safely um, is how we perhaps should be longing for the return of our Lord and how um, we almost pray prayers and think that in a kind of it's nice way, but do we really mean it? And I'm not sure I always do at times either. Um, so it's an opportunity to experience that real feeling and how and how we can apply it to um, the coming of our Lord. It seems always so far away, and we'll look at that in Thessalonians in our New Testament reading. So, it's Advent. It's the 14th of December. It's Monday. It's John of the Cross, poet, teacher and teacher of the faith. It's a lesser festival, so we'll have a collect. How is your day? I've lit the candle. I've said nothing apart from waffle. So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Morning, Liz, and maybe Roger. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today, it's a long one, so we've only got the one, is Psalm 40. Psalm 40. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He brought me out of the roaring pit, out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon a rock and made my footing sure. He has put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, who does not turn to the proud that follow a lie. Great are the wonders you have done, O Lord my God. How great your designs for us. There is none that can be compared with you. If I were to proclaim them and tell of them, they would be more than I am able to express. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sacrifice for sin you have not required. Then I said, then said I, lo, I come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me, that I should do your will, O my God. I delight to do it, your law is within my heart. I have declared your righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips, and that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have not hidden in my heart. I have not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and truth from the great congregation. Do not withhold your compassion from me, O Lord. Let your love and your faithfulness always preserve me. For innumerable troubles have come about me. My sins have overtaken me so that I cannot look up. They are more in number than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them be driven back and put to shame who wish me evil. Let those who seek insults upon me be desolate because of their shame. Let all who seek you rejoice in you and be glad. Let those who love your salvation say always, the Lord is great. Though I am poor and needy, the Lord cares for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. O oh my God, make no delay. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'm just going to, oh, oh, I'm just going to say hello to people. Hello, Bill and Sheila. Hello, Anne, and hello, Chris. Welcome to Morning Prayer. If you would like to read the Old Testament for yourself, then it is Isaiah 49, verses 14 to 25. Isaiah 49, verses 14 to 25. But we're going to go down to Thessalonians. It's 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. 
Now concerning the times and seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labour pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love and for a helmet of hope of salvation. For God has, destin God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. So, just a quickie for this one. Hi, Chris. Hi, Richard. Nice to see you all. Um, the idea that we know when Jesus will return is, is foolish because we don't. Jesus even himself says he doesn't know when the time is appointed, that it is only God who knows these things. And that's really important for us because actually, you know, that is the way um, the way it is. Um, if you knew it was going to be next Tuesday, um, what would you do differently? And so would the, that behaviour be what you're doing now would that be false behavior you know it's like i'm telling your children to behave because father christmas has got his naughty list and nice list out and um for them obviously it's a great tool as a parent to go oh rudolph's watching you or something um and then you get good behavior for a while because there's a um there's a reason for it. There's a sense of immediacy. Christmas is coming, therefore let's all behave ourselves. Hi, Pat and Ray. Welcome. I was worried I didn't see you so early this morning. Um, so, obviously, um, intentions behind actions are the thing. Um, should we behave like Jesus is coming next Tuesday or tomorrow or in the next hour? Well, probably yes. What does that look like? Difficult for us to perhaps comprehend, which is why when I was talking in my sermon um, on Sunday about that sense of how we can um, get an understanding of what it should feel like. So that anticipation of being back with loved ones, of a vaccine and the opportunity to go back to the life that we once lived, um, that real deep longing sense in our hearts is how we should be feeling about Jesus's return. And if I'm to be honest with you, I don't always feel it that way um, as keenly as I should as top of my mind as I should. When you read some of the letters, Paul's letters, um, you can see that they are really expecting it to be very soon. Um, and maybe with us so many generations later, that sense of immediacy has waned. And so our enthusiasm and our expectation has gone along and waned with it. In that we are, well, you know, Jesus is going to come again. Mm -hmm. You know, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You know, and we're not really um, feeling that deep request for thy kingdom to come. Oh, that there be a vaccine so I can hug my loved ones. I've so missed my grandchildren. I've so missed my parents. I've so missed going on holiday. I've so missed, you know, that longing 
is that same longing which you feel. So it's helpful to perhaps use that as an example. So I'm going to quickly have a little look at John of the Cross because I don't know much about him. Um, I come from a background of not really um, paying much attention to saints. So I'm just going to have a quick look and see what it says about him. So he was born to an impover impoverished noble family near a villa in Spain in 1542. Juan, Juan de Ypres or Eep, was brought up by his widowed mother and went to a charity school. He worked as a nurse and received further education from the Jesuits before entering the Carmelite order when he was 21. Having distinguished himself as a Sam Salamanca at Salamanca University, he was ordained in 1567 and met Teresa of Avila soon afterwards. He made a great impression on her and she persuaded him to help her to help with her reform of the Carmelite order. His labours brought him into conflict with religious authorities and he was even impoverished for a period, yet these experiences prompted him to some of his finest poetry and mystical writing. In particular, he described the dark night of the soul as it is purified in its approach towards God. After 10 years, a superior to several different houses, he again fell out of favour and was banished to Andalusia in southern Spain, where he died after severe illness on this day in the year 1591. Apologies, my, I haven't got this, my uh, watch on silent. <laughs> Go away. Right. So, The Dark Knight. I mentioned that when I was... Um, speaking on sunday um of the darkness that dark night of the soul uh the desert opportunities where we feel more keenly those uh feelings of need and desperation that cause us to uh, be more mindful in prayer and in um seeking god's help uh so quite apt we're going to move on now to the responses. Morning, Rachel. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, I've said hello to Pat and Ray. Just catch up with a few people as they come on. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. For the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. For the night is far spent and the day is at hand. The Benedictus, the Song of Zechariah. And we have lesser festivals. We uh, have a special refrain for the Benedictus. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. 
those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens. And those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. So we turn now to our intercessions. Please do, if you have anybody that's in need of prayer, do let me know. Pop it into the comments. You don't have to give great details. We don't do anything other than first names. So please, um, if there's a name that comes up that's familiar to you, don't naturally assume it is the person that you know. It could be, it may not be, but you know, we trust God who knows every single hair on our head and what each and every individual needs. And so we pray in faith for the healing of that person, whether we know them or not, whether we have inside information or not on how they are. So that being said, there's a few things that we need to pray for this morning. If there are countries or people or anything that you would like prayer for, then pop it in the comments. I keep my eyes open for that specific reason so I can respond. So that we can pray together. So, loving God, we do pray for the needs of our world. We ask for an end to this pandemic. We give thanks for the vaccines that are being produced, for the scientists that created them, for the volunteers that became part of the study for its effectiveness. We pray for an equal and fair distribution of the vaccine so that all countries will become COVID free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for countries in the developing world where hygiene and medicine and social distancing are a real issue for people. We pray for those countries where the virus can spread so quickly. We pray that this pandemic, that their leaders will be able to make wise decisions to protect the people as well as the economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for places where there are natural disasters, war or famine, and pray that these countries and these places, we pray for the people, for the livelihoods, for the loved ones lost, for innocent lives, for people that are displaced because of persecution. Lord, we pray for peace in our world, for every human to cohabit this world in peace. We give thanks for all those who work for peace, for wise counsellors, for our leaders, and for an end to greed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our natural world. May each of us as individuals do our part to cut our use of plastic, fuels and waste. We pray for our world leaders as this coming year there will be global summits and discussions on cutting carbon emissions. We pray that all world leaders would sign up, that they would not be empty words, that there would be action behind them. We pray that our world will sustain all life safely and healthily, that the birds, that the air, the fish of the sea and the animals on our land will be able to live with us in peace and without exploitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own country and all that is going on within it at this time. For all those businesses that are waiting with bated breath for the results of the Brexit negotiations. Those that are suffering from the pandemic. Those in the hospitality and entertainment industry in particular. Or those who have lost jobs or are in fear of losing their jobs. We pray that support and sustainability will be there to help them. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our schools and our universities and place, all places of education. We give thanks for the teachers and lecturers who have been continuing to work through the whole of this pandemic. We give thanks for their great courage and their calling. We pray for their safety in health, mind, body and spirit as the term draws to a close. We give thanks for the continued work that they do under such great strain and difficulty and pray that they would be able to spend the Christmas holidays resting, recuperating and having time with their families. We lift to those, you, those teachers and lecturers known to us, Noelle, Lisa, Nick, Susan, Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew and Sarah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people, for those students travelling home, that they would have safe travels, that their um, COVID tests would prove um, uh, COVID free, and that they would be able to spend time with their families. We pray for our children and, and those in school education. We pray that their childhoods, as well as their education, would not be sacrificed as a result of this pandemic. We pray for the mental health, as well as the physical health of our children and young people. So much pressure on them these days. We lift to you the names of those children and young people known to us. Joel, Talitha, Grace, Emily, Lily, Jacob, Hannah, Jake, Oscar, Kerry, Anton, Callum, Phoebe, Ellie, Travis, Nathan, Ruby, Noah, Evie, Charlie, Jack and Mia. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all our care homes and refuges and homes that care for the most vulnerable of all ages. We pray for their sustainability, for the vaccine to reach them first and for the homes to be able to open up so that they can visit and see each other and their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all our charities up and down the country, including our churches. We pray that at the end of this pandemic, they would still be around to care for those in need. Charities, both large and small, who are struggling those that care for our environment, our historical buildings, our animals, both wild and domestic. For our cancer charities, for the children's charities, for our churches. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And God, we lift to you all those who need your healing touch at this time. Through the wonder of medicine or through your Holy Spirit, we pray that mind, body, soul and spirit would be restored holistically to full health. We pray for Robert, for, for Gina, Georgina, for Ruth, for Christine. For Sandra, for Eddie, for Dennis, for Dawn, for Robbie, for Phoebe, for Vicky, for Addie, for William, 
for Stephanie, for Beverly, for Roy, for Rachel, for Martina's mum, for Alan, for Leslie, for Linda, for Liz, for Marcia, for Gerald, for Sylvia, for Jerry, for Mark, for Dennis, for Beryl, for Mary, for Ken, for Susan, for Kevin, for Pauline, for Eric, for Claire, for Lynn, for Anne, for Judy, for Judy, for Catherine, for Lizzie, for Tizzy, for Natasha, for Maria, for Aurea, for Joel, for Joe, sorry, for Alex, for Amber, for Julie, for Carol, for Michael, and for Astrid. We pray for their healing. Give thanks for their continued recovery and for the doctors, nurses and care workers who care for them as well as loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Carolyn and for Donald. For Carolyn as she recovers from illness and for Donald as they both seek to find the perfect house with which to move to. We pray for them as they seek a new home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And I turn now to our Saturday intercessions, just to cover all our bases this morning. Loving God, we pray for all who are affected by the coronavirus across our world, for illness or isolation or anxiety. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping our national policies. We pray that they would make wise decisions. We have prayed for the Brexit negotiations and we pray that they would continue to uh, work and that, that trade agreements would be found. And we pray for the policies regarding the COVID tier system that they too would be based on science and education and on the care, welfare of people as well as the economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our doctors, nurses and medical researchers, hearing on the news the great strain that they are all under. We pray for their health, both mental and physical. And we give thanks that through their skill and insights, many will be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable and for the fearful, for the grave, the ill and the dying, and for their loved ones who may or may not be able to be with them. We pray that they would know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and so we commend ourselves and all to whom for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God merciful father accept these prayers for the sake of your son our saviour Jesus Christ amen our collect for today O oh God, the judge of all who gave your servant John of the cross a warmth of nature a strength of purpose and of mystical faith that sustained him even in the darkness. Shed your light on all who love you and grant them union of body and soul in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
quite like that prayer. I'm going to say it slightly differently. Loving God, judge of all, give us all a warmth of nature, a strength of purpose and a mystical faith to sustain us even in the darkness. Shed your light on us who love you and grant us union of body and soul in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you for your hearts and thumbs up that came up while I was praying. That was brilliant. It feels like I'm getting little amens and nods of the heads when, I, when you do that. So it's really encouraging to me to know that, you know, um, we're praying together in these um, unusual times. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Um, do have a look at our Advent window online. Oh, thank you, Kate and Pat. Um, yeah, do have a look at our Advent calendar online on our website. Um, yes, uh, lovely faces and familiar people, uh, maybe to you, uh, lots of people from our congregation. In fact, there were so many volunteers, I didn't get looking. So, um, yes, do have a look at that. It's great. And I will see you tomorrow. Until then, the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Stay safe, stay healthy.